Look at that back there, Sarasota. Looks like we're gonna get a storm, different color water. The storms, I can hear thunder in the background. We're gonna see what's gonna happen. But we're gonna do a little story time now. I think that's what they call it, right? Where I tell a story, and this is gonna to explain to you what money laundering is. The three levels of money laundering in a cute little story, so you won't fucking forget. So my college was next to Atlantic City. So we all, a lot of us got jobs at the casinos. We weren't, oh, I was 18, so I couldn't be a dealer. Those restrictions, but we could be at the table. So here we go. So every Tuesday night, little guy, maybe late 20s, early 30s, would walk in and he'd go to a roulette table and drop eight grand on red. Then he'd go to the next table, next table, like four tables we had at the time because people actually showed up at casinos. And he would win, win or lose, would not care. When he was done, he would take his chips, walk over to the cashier's table, cash out the cash, whatever he had, and leave every Tuesday night. And nobody cared. So this was the 80s, remember. So back then, I asked one of the dealers, after like three nights, uh, three weeks in a row, I said, what the hell's going on? Yeah, he's just laundering his money. He's probably a drug dealer, and he's just laundering his money because that's what you do, right? If you have dirty money, you have to clean it up so that it's not traceable. And remember, back in the 80s, it wasn't well known that drug money was used for terrorist financing because we were dumb back then. It was before 9-11. So we didn't know, so it wasn't even a big deal. I think it was a big deal with the FBI and stuff. But nobody actually cared. So let's go through this, okay? So the first step is placement. He comes in, places the money into the system by betting on red. And that's placement. That's the first level of money laundering. And as a broker dealer or a bank or whatever it is, that's the best chance to catch him because you're putting it into the system, okay? Now, the next level is placing the bets and turning it into chips. That's layering, placing distance between the cash you have and the money. And that's layering. So then the next step, he takes the chips and he walks over to the cashier and gets the cash. That's integration. That's bringing it back into our system, out of the financial system, back into the real world. So again, placement, putting the money in the system, layering, creating a distance, and then integration is when you withdraw it and actually have clean money. And nowadays, now that we know it's for terrorist financing and stuff like that, which is really fucking bad, um, they, have, they have red flags programs where when people put money in and they act a certain way, you have to flag it. The other thing is they created a seat in the Bank Secrecy Act, CTRs and SARS. Like a CTR is any cash transaction in or out of more than 10K has to be reported. Not a big deal, but it is reported. So we can track it. The, third, the second one is a SARS, a suspicious activity report. So that's for any suspicious transaction of more than five grand and it gets reported to the Treasury or the Department of Enforcement or the IRS or something like that. If you want more of this, Go check me out on YouTube under Capital Advantage Tutor.